Moving on now, the rapidly spreading Omicron variant is becoming a major challenge for the health authorities in Israel. The healthcare system is struggling to conduct enough tests. Tens of thousands of people crowded into COVID testing centers over the weekend. Some centers queues lasted hours. Sunday saw 86% rise in the number of tests compared to last week. This is the number of daily cases crossed the 5,000 mark. Israel has not witnessed a faster surge in COVID infections yet. And you can see that the line is crazy. I'm not sure that this is the right system to do it, uh, relying on the PCR test as it is right now. And as for the new variant, I'm not sure that uh, the hysteria is, uh, is making any sense. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett said that up to 50,000 people might soon be affected each day, while eligibility for testing could be tightened to help relieve lines at test centers. Bennett said that the number of those eligible to be tested should be limited, added that precedence should be given to those at risk of severe illness and to essential workers. Sources say that Israel's health ministry is planning to revise its testing policies as per reports to be released from quarantine. The ministry is expected to begin allowing unvaccinated people exposed to an infected person to undergo a quick antigen test at centers instead of PCR tests. The Israeli government aims to set up more testing centers while shifting focus to rapid testing. The health ministry has purchased 20 million additional rapid test kits as well. PCR tests involve a longer process of sampling, transport, documentation and laboratory services. Antigen tests, however, are easy to administer and provide quick results. Experts, however, say rapid tests are far less reliable than PCR tests. Daily cases in Israel are expected to reach record highs in the coming three weeks. Over the past 11 days, daily infections have more than quadrupled. Officials are predicting that by the end of this week, number of new cases could cross 10,000. Meanwhile, as countries begin administering a third dose to counter the Omicron surge, Israel has announced that it will now offer a fourth dose of the COVID vaccine to help people aged above 60 and to health workers. Uh, Israel started preparing for Omicron early on. Uh, this bought us time, which we're using to our advantage. Last week, Israel began vaccinating its most vulnerable citizens with the fourth dose of the COVID vaccine. Tonight, I can announce that Israel will also begin administering the fourth vaccine to all Israelis aged 60 and above, as well as our wonderful medical workers, four months after they've received their last dose following the approval of Israel's Ministry of Health. Now in Israel, it has been suggested that up to a third of Israel's almost 10 million people could contract the Omicron variant of COVID-19 in the next three weeks. Our correspondent Jody Cohen spoke with Professor Jonathan Rashoni, who works at the School of Molecular Cell Biology and Biotechnology at the Tel Aviv University. Listen in. So one shortcoming of the current COVID vaccines is the amount of time they're effective for. What can you tell us about the development of longer lasting COVID vaccines? Right now we're in the midst of a, a reality show. We've been confronted with a natural disaster, if you will, a highly infectious and lethal virus. And we've come up, we, the scientific community, of course, uh, have come up with a very, very effective and impre uh, impressive quick fix. These new Pfizer, Moderna type of vaccines, the messenger RNA vaccines, are a dramatic uh, answer to the challenge of corona. However, as you mentioned, their durability, their robustness, the long lasting effect of protection seems to be less than some of the traditional vaccines. So I would expect that either we will discover through a regiment of a number of boosts we can gain durability, and we're on the right track as that is concerned, but we will probably also see the development of new, more effective, long-lasting vaccines. And if I can elaborate here, uh, part of the problem in managing the pandemic is trying to get people to actually get vaccinated. Uh, 
vaccines don't protect people, vaccination protects people, and we need people to get vaccinated. And hesitancy is a serious problem. Some people have raised concerns that these new vaccines, RNA-containing vaccines, are a new technology. And here I'd like to mention that seven of the traditional vaccines we give our babies, rotavirus, polio, flu, mumps, measles, rubella, uh, and I missed something, hepatitis A, these are all RNA-containing viruses. The vaccines are live attenuated RNA viruses. And these have been used now for decades, 50 years and more. They've proven to be extremely effective, extremely durable, and extremely safe. And so people who are concerned about RNA as being potentially something brand new, this is simply not the case. The technologies in producing global amounts, billions of doses in such a short time is a revolution. But otherwise, uh, RNA in itself is not something to be concerned about. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.